Hi, welcome to GIF channel. Today's episode we are installing this TPMS U912 for Mazda. This is specifically for Mazda because the display it, it has fits on one of the buttons, so the space is here on the buttons. I'll use the empty one here. Uh, it's quite more expensive because uh, it's specifically made for Mazda and uh, it's, it's easy to install as always. These are quite easy to install. You only need power and ground. That's all you need. They even give you uh, with the fuse to, to grab from the fuse box and to grab from the chassis on a boat. That's what I use on the Mazda 2 which I'm going to show you as well later on in the video. But first the 626. On the Mazda 2 I did not do any soldering. Zero soldering. It was quite pleasing. Uh, here though this won't fit and this we'll see. So I'll see where I'll, I'm going to grab the, the uh, cables from now. Few notes. First note when ordering, if you're ordering the same things, uh, when ordering make sure it says Mazda on it because I ordered Toyota one even though in the title it was saying Mazda. And actually it was saying Mazda because they also sell in the same offer for quite a lot cheaper a drill adapter for with which you can drill your dashboard to place to place uh, where was it to place this um, which is garbage this could be for any car but they just placed the random brand names on the top Japanese brand names and I, I fell for it so I bought Toyota so don't fall for it make sure when you're selecting in the choice to have Mazda and select Mazda. These are more expensive. I don't know if I mention it because of the form factor. Way more expensive. Another note is for the sensors. I chose external ones. They are easier to install and they have replaceable batteries. This for me is uh, the way to go. Yes, they can get stolen and yes, they are ugly. But uh, the other ones which like they, they claim five years of battery life, but let's face it, five years Chinese battery, no, probably three years. So in three years, you have to throw them away and buy a new one. So do you think these are going to get stolen in three years? I don't believe so. So I think this is better and they're also a few dollars cheaper. Um, but for me, that's that's the better choice external ones and I can install them myself otherwise you also pay for installation and every time you swap your wire uh, tires uh, rotate your tires you actually will also need to pay because those guys charge if there is a sensor inside not that they do anything but they still decide to charge so I chose this we'll see how it goes on the how they look on the 6 to 6 on the Mazda 2 they look Awful. I'm not happy. Uh, here they might actually be a little bit hidden because of the uh, rims I have installed. Okay. And on the Mazda 2, I already because I was running, I'm running them on already six months on the Mazda 2. They saved one tire. It had a puncture and it was leaking a little bit of air, depending on how you parked. It may leak. It may not leak. And it was not visibly leaking. And uh, the tire. Uh, was just uh, it, it was not good to to drive with such tire. You can ruin it. Okay, enough of me talking. Let's now remove this from Mazda 6, which I placed and I cannot remove. We'll see how I'll remove it. Fortunately, it's the furthest, so it should be easier. Remove it. See where I'm going to grab the signals from, and just install it. It's extremely simple to install. Wiring time. I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to use signals that I already got for my auto DRL. I have another video for that one. It controls the uh, daytime running lights and the headlight switching between them. <clears throat> I have a video how I installed it on both 626 and the Mazda 2. So if you're interested, you can watch it. But here I have a white cable for ignition and a black cable for ground. I'm going to use those here. If I were you, 
and I do not have such a thing, I would uh, do the same approach I did on the Mazda 2, which you're going to see later on. Uh, but I'll, I'll have to, you have to buy such an adapter because it does not come with the, with the uh, kit. This one, you remove the appropriate fuse, depending on do you want it on ACC or you want it on uh, ignition. I prefer ignition. So measure which fuse you want, you remove it, you plug this one in, and you plug two fuses here, and you have your uh, positive lead here to get the uh, 12 volts from it. And the ground is quite easy. You see that bolt right here? Let me try to focus more. Yes, that bolt here, this is actual genuine grounding point from the car. That white thing at the top are a lot of black cables going straight up. So this is factory grounding point. You just unscrew it and use the supplied uh, adapter. Okay, let's tap into the signals and finish off the installation. And that's how it looks like. I'm happy. Looks quite well. It's slick. Um, the spot I, I had taken is by moving the uh, head, the fog lights here. I have a video for that one. You should click it. So there is a spot here. Um, this is a custom button. I have another video for that one. You can click it, but it has nothing to do with how I made that spot available. Okay, now when I turn on the ignition, this actually shows. Now I have already set it up because uh, I had to test it to report to the seller if it's good or not. So I had to test it already a long, long, long ago. I actually tested it on installation on the already installed uh, version on the Mazda 2. So here are the sensors and what you should know when installing them is first turn on the ignition or just power on this unit and then place the sensors otherwise it's just going to beep. Um, you don't want to do that. Uh, if it starts to beep that's what I actually did on the Mazda 2 because I don't read manuals usually. Uh, it starts to beep you just drive the car then these sensors will wake up and they will start sending data. Now these are sleeping even though I'm shaking them. Uh, I guess I need more shaking for them to wake up. Let's go and actually show you how to install them and how they look on my rims. Okay, installing the sensor it's quite simple. I don't know even why I'm explaining it but it says left front uh, you first need to add the security nut here, then just screw this one on, and after that you use the supplied wrench to screw the nut back so you, you, you cannot by hand remove the sensor. This is anti-theft protection. And that's how it will look like. I don't think it's that bad because I have a border here that's why it doesn't stick out and it doesn't look that bad but on the Mazda 2 it's uglier, way uglier okay let's go to the Mazda 2 okay before we go to the Mazda 2 I actually want to show you the features of it uh, how does it behave so I turn on the ignition and it shows the pressures and you also if you click here you can show the temperatures now this one is a bit higher because I was experimenting with that part and by holding set you actually can adjust different things like a PSI or a bar you can also uh, how was it yes you can also adjust how high uh, the alarm will uh, beep if it's too high or too low. Same goes for temperature. If it's above 65, it will beep. There's no nothing about too low. And these, I believe, are sensor positions to how they are paired. Uh, maybe. Okay, so. 
I've actually mounted here the front this one the front right so now I'll slowly start uh, untightening it so air starts to leak to see what happens starts detecting if I increase the, the speed starts beeping you have a flat tire now when I stop it it directly stops but still blinks because 2.2 is my actually minimal the ISO uh, I, I have set it to 2.2 so it started blinking okay and I'll remove the whole thing and we'll try the temperature uh, don't fall off okay sorry it had fallen off so wh when it's beeping you can actually press here to dismiss but I believe flat tire you cannot dismiss or well, maybe you can okay now I forgot my heat gun uh, upstairs and I'm too lazy to go there but I have a heater here so let's turn on the heater and the, the thing is if you turn on the temperature temperature reading uh, it's constantly turning off in, a, in like I don't know 10 seconds or something like that so I'm currently heating the sensor like so and Ooh, it's, like, it's starting to okay it's not sending yet the data let's try again not yet, still things 13. I don't know if it went to sleep, maybe it went to sleep when uh, I removed it. I'm going to make it hot and then install it. Hopefully, it will then send data. It's too hot to hold. Let's see. No, okay. I'll now mount it. Okay, I have mounted it, shows this, and the temperature is already 24, so the temperature actually works, it measures the temperature of the air which is inside of the tire. Okay, that's pretty much all the, uh, all the things this module has, now let's go install it, show you how I already installed it on the Mazda 2. Okay, time to install it in my wife's Mazda 2 DE. Now, I've seen some Mazda 2 uh, pictures where this one is a whole piece and there is no blank here. Um, mine does have a blank, which I'm happy about it because I'm going to swap it. Uh, if you're one of those owners with a whole, whole thing, maybe you can get a panel from one that has it separate. If not, uh, the Chinese also sell you a cutter where you can cut a hole here or here wherever you want to install this thing of course it costs extra and doesn't looks it doesn't look that stock now to remove this panel you simply grab and pray and then disconnect the connector which I already did disconnect and you can see this is simply a blank which you squeeze from the two sides and it pops out now, this one requires, they look like three cables, but one is some kind of sensor probably. It requires just power and ground. They say here in the instructions, you, you should connect the power to ACC, but um, we'll see. Now the ground, they give you on the other side of the two, they give you power, come on power with the fuse and the fuse is the right type 
this is 15 amp fuse uh, it's hard to see but blue one it's 15 amp and uh, something for a nut where you can actually um, grab ground from what I usually do is I cut wires and um, I solder but this time I'm actually going to do what most people would do and don't cut and solder I'm going to install it uh, as the Chinese gave it so I need to find first I need to find where to put the ground unfortunately everything here is plastic I even removed all those pieces and I cannot find easy place but I found let me grab my multimeter I found those two holes here which are empty with me and there's ground on them I don't know if you can hear the beep so these are ground and I have here my hardware from 6 to 6 from where I got a perfect bolt that I'm going to use to grab the ground from now the 12 volts let me switch this to voltage uh, the 12 volts we are going to grab from here and what we need to do is find is find which one do we want by placing here and looking at the voltage they gave 15 amp but this doesn't mean you cannot use any one of those as long as it's more uh, it's less or equal 15 so not this one it's not possible but all the rest it's possible to be swapped with this one that they gave um, now I'm still biased should I use the ACC or so let me check now now I'm on ACC and on ACC you have this one at 12 volts because this one is actually marked here as a cigarette lighter and it's okay to be ACC it's the one for ACC what I don't like about ACC it gets disconnected while you're powering on the car and also if you're just stopped and listening to music you, I don't want this thing running then so I'll, I would much prefer ignition now this car comes equipped with he seated heats uh, <laughs> heated seats sorry and there it is the the bottom 15 amp is actually for the seat warmer and I'm planning to use that fuse so this one currently if I touch doesn't have anything but if I turn on ignition and now I touch and we have it so plan is to use this one what what this means though is you have to be careful how you put this is it like that or like that this needs to be on the side that does not have 12 volts when the fuse is unplugged so you go you open your front front uh, bonnet and grab this from the fuse box there you come here just grab this remove it and then grab the multimeter and check from which side there are 12 volts so from left side there are 12 volts and from the right side there is nothing so this means we need to put the fuse so the cable is actually pointing inwards to the car not like that like that put it like that okay so that's the plan let's do it and turn on good okay that's all i hope you enjoyed the video hit subscribe i'll be posting more videos soon bye bye